Debbie Romero is your host today on Transcend with Debbie and can be found on all platforms. She is a renowned international evidential psychic medium, Reiki master, Mune Kai certified, and empowerment teacher who is holding space to bring awareness with other like-minded souls as we raise the vibration collectively for humanity with awareness, inspiration, love, compassion, and healing. Now, your host of Transcend with Debbie, Debbie Romero. Yes, we are live. Welcome, welcome, all of you here on Transcend with Debbie. It is an honor. I have my beautiful friend, Miss Kelly Brickle in the house. Welcome, girl. Hey, Debbie. Hey, lots of love to you and everybody. Oh, my gosh. It's so cool to have you here. I know many of you have been waiting behind the scenes, so thank you so much for your patience as we were um, getting it together. Miss Debbie's coming in hot. Miss Kelly Brickle's coming in hot. I was just called a little candy cane, and so we're coming in sweet. <laughs> Like I said, every day is Christmas. Every day. every day is Christmas, girl. Can you say some hellos to some to our beautiful audience that we have watching us today? Can you go in there and see what's up? Say hello. Yes, to some absolutely, people. absolutely. Hello, Christina. Hello, Mike. Hello, Iris, Maggie, Jennifer, Aspen, Emma. Everybody, come on in. Hello. Hello, y'all. It is such an honor to have you guys all here today. I mean, you're going to come in with your questions. We're going to do our thing. Happy New Year for those who haven't seen us in the new year. Happy Valentine's Month of Love, even though every day is a day of love. But like this month, my girl, Jennifer Rose, she's watching right now behind the scenes. She's the love doctor, right? So she mm. knows all about that vibe of being in that bliss of energy of love, of gentleness, of, you know, just that. I want to just all of a sudden see like the Cupid arrow, just the angels going, oh. She's <laughs> so, doing uh, arrows of candy canes. This girl is awesome. I love her. I so love her. So for those who do not know, uh, Miss Kelly Brickle, please introduce yourself. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, yes. I'm Kelly Brickle, and my specialties are psychic and numerology. I am a psychic medium numerologist and teacher. I also do healing work, and I really just love sharing my findings within my own personal work and life with everybody to create normalcy within this work and also to empower people learning about their spirit energy. And I love just breaking things down and talking about it with awesome people like Debbie. Mm, thank you for um, being that light for spirit world and for others. I love the word that you said, empower the spirit. You know, I think that it's amazing that you say that one. I love that you say that because it is about empowering someone else to be able to be that bright beacon for themselves and also to hold that link. And you're teaching them how to connect in that way. Um, what inspired you to take the path of teaching and to help that level of bring that level of awareness? Um, it's something since I was young that I was always fascinated by teaching. So before I could even conceptualize um, understanding what spirituality was beyond what I grew up with. Um, I thought to myself like, hey, it might be nice to be a teacher. So I always kind of looked up to my teachers from when I was really young in any subject. I could be just in a, you know, a park district class or elementary school or high school or just you know, at summer camp, whatever, um, I would always like really watch really good teachers share whether like with compassion or information. And when I started getting more connected to this work personally with my experiences, um, I started reading a lot of books and then I started going to a lot of workshops and I wanted to see how people who were really articulate and really passionate about sharing would express themselves. So it was a passion since I was young 
through wanting to actually be a part of this work and in between just being really committed to what it means to be the teacher. That's been a huge part of my life. Right. And I think that's another word that you're using there that's really strong that stands out to me is commitment. You know, um, it's a beautiful path that you're sharing with us and how you've been able to observe and to watch and to listen and, and to feel what that feels like. I know that you're very well known for numerology. Um, you know, when I say that, the, the movie The Matrix comes on or the movie The Numbers, and it's just like all the numbers just comes to, to me at this moment that I say that. Um, what awakened you to numerology? Okay, so what awakened me to numerology was it really was a first um, energetic language that I could connect to to understand if something consistently had symbols. Um, I really was into meditation and feeling and visualizing and connecting to spirit, but I didn't really understand how people were using tools. And I was like, well, okay, it has to be like possible somewhere mm -hmm. mm -hmm. astrology or, or or card reading maybe it had you know there's a part of me that actually didn't believe it was possible and honest in all honesty i started researching some of these things because i'm just like it's more likely not possible than possible and when i started researching numerology for whatever reason i just started finding consistency very easily and mm -hmm. i was just like i i I feel like there's threads of truth here. And as I slowly understand, I can't deny that. And the more I understand, wow, this is something that easily comes to me. And I feel like a lot of people, let's say, don't see this part of numerology or right. are not exposed to this. So it was like a hobby I always had on the side um, that I would just read and research or I would like, a lot to myself and it would exercise my brain and so I was like I started being in touch with the numbers as like an energetic exercise if that makes sense right right it does and I, and I I know I'm going to take it to another level here because for many of us who numbers do speak to us right I always feel there's a calculation to everything that we do in the exact moment there's a number for it and I and I really believe like when I was awakening i had that process where oh that's that's a number this was like calculated this was supposed to happen and, and so not only the the angel numbers but other just as you say there's an adding there's a connection to it and it's it's almost that geometric patterns that we connect to and it just grows and grows so it's like it never ends right um for you to take the next level of to teach it and to break it down for people in a reading, I find that fascinating. You can get a lot, whether it's astrology or whether it's through breaking down their birthday. I always say, you know, when someone says, can I have your birthday? I'm like, you know, that's like a deep, that's like you're giving your DNA away, bro. Like what time am I born at and my birthday? You don't realize how detailed the universe is speaking to you on that exact moment that you were, you were given birth. And so, do you, when you work that way, like what happens to your brain? Do you just go, doo, 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 doo? like what, what do you, do you just get like a download of all this stuff? Like what happens to you? If I want to, I mean, um, on certain days, like I'll, I'll shut my brain off, but, um, I would say with numerology, it's a very, um, quick way in and it's like my brain can be off, but all of a sudden, like, I will look at just numbers and I can go in really fast because I go, oh my gosh, it's almost like even though I turned my brain off to the spirit world or like psychically, because let's say I need a break or I just, you know, I'm tired or things like that. Um, and some people will get, will say, hey, I need, you know, to, to shut this off. Not everyone wants to shut off their brain like that, but sometimes I do. Um, with the numbers, it's so cerebral on one level that I find myself going, oh, I shut this off, but yet I'm right back in. And isn't it funny? My phone is right. And I turned off, and I love I turned off my ringer too. But you know, that ain't no accident. That's, 
that's no accident. You know, when, when the phones ring, everything's a message. So it's like spirits calling girls, the universe is calling, like we're all connecting to the numbers. The universe is saying, yes, new moon energy. Yes, lunar new calendar moon energy. energy. Unexpected, yeah. unexpected. Oh, look at this. Mike Egan's birthday is two, 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 two. Oh, wow. Oh, that, yeah, so that will that will showcase that two energy is prominent in your life. It's just to what degree. Because sometimes, so this is the thing with repeating numbers. The, the total value of the number is always more powerful than the sequential numbers. But if you have multiple sequential numbers, that means that there's a sequence. That's a mass vibration that has to be looked at as well but if we have like let's say nine two two eight two two one two two three two 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 we'd go wow that's a lot of twos yes you would look at the twos but you would actually look at the value first before all those twos unless it was two 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 and then you're like you can't get away from that that has to be looked at it was made to repeat itself Right. I remember taking a numerology course and um, it had to do with even going into the tarot, like it like really blended really well with the tarot. And they lose me at like adding your address. And what does that come to? And what does this building mean? And I have a friend who um, also has her beliefs. And so in her culture, she's adding everything. She will not take a certain property if it has a certain number to it or whatever it adds. So people really live in this way, it's a lifestyle that they go based on, just like astrology. I ain't gonna make no changes until after, you know, Mercury, or I won't sign nothing until after this. And so do you do you do that for yourself? Do you follow your numerology and say, well, this is not a good time? Like, how do you um, choose to maneuver through your self-awareness? I do. Um, I can't control everything because sometimes in life you're given opportunities and you're literally given may- maybe one or two dates and this is what a person has for you. And you go, oh, if only we could do a different date, right? With with how I come alive with certain vibrations and what I want the certain day to embody so I can just be so fluid and free. And honestly, certain days have certain energies. And it's just like, uh, you know, the, the Aquarius full moon. That, that's happening in two days. If you have uh, a full, if you have your moon in Aquarius, excuse me, or a lot of planets in Aquarius, actually that energy is very natural for you to be in. But let's say mm-hmm. if you have a lot of energy in Leo, well, Leo's the opposite of Aquarius. So you might find yourself feeling a little bit awkward at times with the Aquarian moon. So um, that's like how it is with numerology. There's opposite numbers with what is harmonious in your chart. And you don't want to set yourself up to do big things on days that really don't support your energy. So I am a firm believer that self-mastery is very important. And there's ways where you can flow with the tides, even if they're rocky. But um, yeah, look at the dates and set things up to your advantage with your chart. Yes. So when you're doing an astrology report, is your numerology report different than an astrology? It's different, right? Yes. So do you, yes. okay. And so someone can, can, do you do those, Kelly? No, I'm yes. thinking, oh, I love this girl. I'm going to have to get a chart from you because, yes. you know, I have been following the waves and the ebbs and the flows. And I love what you say when it comes to um, not making moves based on your energy. And, and sometimes you just have to show up. And you have to make the you have to do the the ebb and the flow of what doesn't feel good, but you're still working through it with the hopes that spirit and the energy is going to just give you the boost that you need. And so you you're going in there and taking the leap of faith. So I love that. So do you do that on the side so people can reach out to you, get a chart read of a numerology? Oh, this is awesome! I totally do that. So like uh, on my website, you'll go into my readings and you can choose to have let's say a psychic and numerology reading, a numerology reading or numerology chart reading, as well as other different styles of, styles of numerology, like business numerology or relationship numerology. So I break down things in different ways with numerology. And with shows like this, you don't really get to see the full chart experience because you can't possibly pull all that up with a person just coming on live. You're just getting right. a tidbit. Yeah. And I love that you say that. So thank you for saying that because there is so much in depth that a reading can really bring forward when you're taking time. You know, you're really going into all the different layers of the auric field, depending on what's coming to the surface and what you're ready to hear. And so when you're just getting a little piece here and there, you know, that's 
Spirit's going to do their best to get what needs to come out as quick as they can, what's on the top of the agenda. So I love that you say that. You, you guys you heard it here. Miss Kelly Brickle can hook you up with a full-on chart of your numerology. I'm loving this. Let's do some. Anybody have questions for her on this? Like, this is the time you got the girl. If you want your numerology numbers read, we could do that. I'll piggyback on some readings with at as we did in our, I know I last saw you in Christmas and I know we were doing our readings. She was hooking it up with her numerology. I was coming in and we were doing both doing mediumship and psychic. We had so much fun. And so to be here on Zoom again, um, I just want to give you a big hug and opening up your home, your platform in Orange County and welcoming Transcend with Debbie and the community, all of us coming together in such a beautiful way. I had such a great time. So I want to say thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome anytime. And it is a lovely space. And uh, it, it was wonderful, you know, demonstrating with you in person and connecting our energies. And it was such a blast. It really was. Yeah. So we did. We had some fun. It was really cool. Oh, my gosh. She was like, Debbie, I can't even look at you, Debbie. <laughs> Your your energy, your energy, her energy was going, and I'm just like, whoa, I need a ground, girl. I need a ground. And then, like, I ground, and then I got uh, Debbie's energy a little soupy. She's like, oh. <laughs> I was like, what are, you, what are you doing to me, girl? So we were, like, sharing energy, and it was, like, opposite but complementary, and it was hilarious. <laughs> She's like, wait a minute hold up i can't even i can't even, you're like really open right now i was like yeah no we're going ahead i was looking at you my brain was going blah, 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 blah. like the inside of my brain and i'm like oh god <laughs> i have to make sure that <laughs> we have that effect Great fun. Stacia, thank you, Stacia, for coming out all the way to Orange County and seeing us, Jennifer Rose, all of you that made it out. We appreciate your, your support and your love. We had a great time. Um, people are laughing. You know, this is the beauty of vibration and frequency. So, yeah, thank you so much. Um, let's, let's do some reading. Who's up in here? Who's ready? Oh, Twin Flame, what's this question? How do you know if someone's a twin flame? Ask Pink Girl. Do you want to ask her that question? Go ahead, Miss Kelly. You can, you can both take that one if you want. Okay, okay go ahead, girl. <laughs> you want me? Okay. So, um, a twin flame. Okay. Well, this this definition is is something that a lot of people have issue with. Um, mm -hmm. Like some people think like, oh, that's like a soulmate. Um, some people think it's somebody who like you're supposed to have a very deep, intimate connection with, whether it is emotionally or spiritually, and you're supposed to like set off a chain reaction healing or like open up each other's kundalini energy. So it's like kind of all over the map with how people kind of spiritually identify with twin flame. There isn't one exact definition other than the fact I would say um, you're supposed to have a very deep connection and not all twin flames are supposed to be relationships, like um, a full-fledged relationship. Some are friendships. Some are situationships. Some are um, almosts, right? Uh, but there is this deep spiritual like agenda that gets like enacted through one another because you either have very complement we kind of talked about <laughs> we kind of talked about kind of like a like a, a funny example but you might have complementary energy right so a uh, debbie and i we have complementary energy too at times but like twin flame energy is more like intimate energy so you will have a, a type of signature that the other person needs or you help bring out in another person and it's it's, it's very very personal Okay, so it transcends what you would say a normal relationship, even by chance of it is still labeled as a normal relationship. And there'll be like synchronicities and events and you will have a spiritual awakening either like with the Kundalini energy or a spiritual um, awareness activated. So, um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. It's not your typical soulmate relationship. There's other aspects to it. Dark night of the soul aspects even. So that's kind of how that's I'll open it up like that. How would you describe it? Debbie? Well, you said it beautifully. I think um, when you're going through that, a lot of times it could be a mirroring of, of of the two. Right. So what exists within them and exists within them and it gives them that 
awakening, as you said, the Kundalini, the dark night of the soul, it's giving the mirror effect of where to heal. But there is that telepathic connection. There is that bond. There is that love. There is that support to say, I got you. And there's also that, that um, support. Even when you're down, that energy is always there to uplift you. Even when um, in your awareness, it's there. And even if you're um, in that loving bliss, you're uplifting. And so what you're doing for yourself, you're also doing for that same energy of that twin flame. So if it's a wound that's mirroring, you're healing each other, you're bringing the the, the wound to a, a beautiful place of love, right? There's that existence of, of just building up of power. And oh, I, I love the way you said it. Um, I don't think uh, once you have that connection, and once that that awakening starts, it can be very um, powerful. When I say this, it's always within your mind. It's something that you could think about quite a bit. It is something that your awareness goes to immediately. So you're always kind of looking for that connection. Um, and so it's almost like a reassurance, like you there, I could feel that, I could see that. And so it's like you're nourishing the spirit, right? Your spirit is being nourished and that person's being nourished. But all of the time, does it mean that that person's on your life? It could just be that that person is also there just to hold space so that you can grow and you can heal into those different layers right of what's being brought forward to the surface it can be very heartbreaking too because there is so much power and so much love and frequency that is like wow and and you're looking for that bliss all the time but you also have to keep that grounded you have to keep it protected and you have to stay balanced in the the reality of the 3d versus like wow this power feels the endorphins are just going and you're really out there to that extent and then you have to also bring it back to the reality of bringing that love on earth so it's like you're always looking for that quick high but you also got to understand that energetically it has to be grounded it has to be protected it has to be loved in, a, in another way too so it can go boom 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 as you say. I think, I think that's a really good way to put it too. And, and thank you, Jennifer. Um, like it can be overwhelming because you, you were talking about like, it can feel like a high, that power, that connection. And mm -hmm. there's um, like the 3D and the 5D element to it, like the spiritual connection versus like the human or the physical connection or just the mental connection or emotional connection, depending on All what is it. right. Depending on, what you've enacted for within each other, or even if one person is just cognizant of it. Um, I think that since there's so much going on, there's a spiritual activation that does happen. And a lot of times, one of the people, or even both people, they don't understand how to process it in a human way. So there's a lot of turbulence, mm -hmm. misunderstanding, and discord sometimes that can happen through such a powerful activation of connection. Right. But the gift that you're giving each other is such a beautiful gift to awaken that person to that next level. So as, as um, healers, you're activating a lot of that energy naturally for other people too. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're the twin flame, but you're holding space for that energy to grow for that person to excel, to to um, fill into. So it's almost like a, you talk about the Kundalini. So let's look at that. It's, it's the rising of the energy. If you're starting from the earth and it's rising from the earth and it's going through each chakra, each part of your body is vibrating and you're feeling through it, your whole senses in each chakra, it's rising and it's going to that next level. So you're clearly, your vibration, your frequency changes, it shifts. And so there's a lot that can really go. I mean, this conversation can go on and on, obviously. Um, and then there's- and there's a lot of heartache that can come with that because once mm -hmm. that changes and it shifts, you can get really sad. You can get very depressed. And that's the dark night of the soul because you're wanting that bliss all the time. And, and it's also recognizing that that same energy is God, universal life force energy. So you're also rising it to God and to love because that is what ultimately what it is. It is the life force, the love of spirit. And that God force energy is, exists not only in that person, but also is showing you this is God's love, spirit's love, universal love. And so then you rise your awareness to the next level. And when you're taking it from that person, remember 
that same love and that person exists within you, but it's all around us. And so then if you can change your thinking and bringing it out and acknowledging it that this is the love of everything, then you're expanding it to a whole nother awakening. So, yeah. I, I, I do think so. And, you know, we need sometimes the universe or God, however anyone believes, like, you know, in divinity, um, in spirituality, um, we need something greater than our ourself to enact the next level because we need to get out of our own perspective, out of our own past or patterns. Um, even if we are very open-minded and when we have a twin flame connection, usually is on some level, our energy is vibrating at such a similar vibration. We attract this energy and we come together and we exponentially like meet the divine together. And so when it's enacted, it's like, oh, like I need this person. But really, no, right. just how Debbie right. put it, it's just enacting something bigger than yourself to remind you who you are. So it's not about how it was right. only with that person or under those circumstances. It's just they helped ignite that because you needed something other than yourself to, right. to blossom right. open the next pathway for you. Right. Isn't that beautiful? That's like a beautiful way of holding space for another person. And the magnetism that you give off, that is the magnetic pull. So it's unfortunately, you know, sometimes you don't have, when you're in it, some people aren't really in it and you don't have a choice but to be in it and to go through it. So there's a lot of energy that's pulling you, that you are acknowledging the pull. And sometimes you just have to honor that pull and respect it and give gratitude to it because there is there is medicine in that. There's healing in that. And and not only that, if you end up together, God bless your spirits that you do end up together. And there is that beauty of the unfoldment of what could be even more. So looking at it in the wound to be healed, looking at it to give gratitude for the healing that's done and looking at it and in, in growing to not give love not only limit there, expand it out, you know, take the, take it to another level. Don't give all of it to that one and stuff. Give it to everything. Like, I, I don't know how to explain. I mean, I'm, I'm really going to go into a whole nother world. You know, take it. I'm going, let me just stop. Let me just stop because you know, I feel like, I feel like I'm really taking you to my world here. <laughs> You're like, it's just, you're like, just bring the vibration. Just, just surrender and bring the vibration. It's a trip. I think like, yeah. So the last thing I kind of really want to say, cause it's such a, and I could talk more about it, but it's such an important Yeah, it's a topic. beautiful topic. It is. Because twin flame energy, I really believe like has a role and that role is different than a traditional soulmate relationship and most times a twin flame will be very similar to your energy or complementary to your energy in a, right. a certain way but like it will feel very familiar right or you'll it'll feel very comfortable even if it's uncomfortable it'll have an element of comfort like it pulls you in like you need to experience this and that unfoldment necessarily isn't oh um it means I'm in alignment for the relationship. That unfoldment is for your involvement. And we're not supposed to always be connected to people who were made to crack this open or who we cracked open. Sometimes we are, but that's less likely because it's just a different role. And so a lot of people have very uncomfortable twin flame stories because of that. And it's just a different kind of relationship role and has like that spiritual element not just the attraction element of like physicality. I love that you say that because it it does go into depths of layers and, and you're holding space now when you're opening it up the healing layer of it, you're really holding space for that person to heal as the energy is filtering through you and their energy, your energy is filtering through them. There's a thread and there's this bond that grows. And so when you're seeing the cords and the energy moving, you're intertwined the energy in a, in a way that is really the one. And so that's why it's so powerful because you are the same, you are connecting. And so every now and then you will have that person on your mind. They'll have you on their mind. The energy is 
intertwined. And if it's intertwined, think about that, the Kundalini going. And so if you look at that, that's a beautiful way of saying, man, they really got you. And I really got you. You know, it's like really yeah. looking at it in such a depth. And so that's why it's so powerful because you really are bringing forward that mixture of energy. It's so powerful and beautiful because of that. I love that. And power. Yeah. And it's so yeah. heartbreaking because you're in such alignment and it goes, right. I, can't, like, I can't go any further. And it's like sever. So yeah, it feels, it feels very like life altering. Right. Can you feel into that, Kelly? I could feel into that. So girl, this great question, Aspen, clip multi faucet faucet and dimensional experience of love itself at its highest expression oh my beautiful angel friend the love doctor <laughs> she definitely can fill into that oh, it really is well she has a show a love show on tuesdays on sptv and she talks all about love and does you know her readings on love so she has such a beautiful way of breaking it down and and i really do um believe you know, that. And so it, when you are going through the altered shift of change, find a great support group, someone that is going to have be there to hold space for you because it can be overwhelming. It can be misunderstood. And it also can feel um, heartbreaking, as, as you said. So find someone that will understand it and not look at you like, what are you saying, girl? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, what, 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 the eye twitch on you? <laughs> I find that. I find that it is some, it's a subject that is misunderstood even by energy sensitive people. You could tell someone your right. experience right. and they'd be like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. But I be twitching? I never <laughs> like, had that happen. I, I, I never had that happen before, but it sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get your eye twitching more then. Um, I, think, I think like you know the an essence of this is kind of like it's mind bending like it mm -hmm. makes things happen that question your reality so even when you take this subject to energy sensitive people I think they don't always unless they're very open minded quite know how to take it always as well um, right. I, I, yeah. I, what, what's your experience with telling even well, energy sensitive people crazy things, even though they're real? Well, you know, energy is energy. We're all going to feel into it and it's going to awake us, awaken us in a certain way that um, I, for me, if you were to come to me and you were to talk to me about your experiences, I have a very open perception. Everyone believes differently. If someone is experiencing something, I will never take away their experience because that's their personal experience. I'll hold space for it and give a thought of what my perception would be. But it's always, I always do my best to honor where the person is at in the moment. I've had my own experiences with it, so I could understand the feelings of it. I could understand the feelings even when you're holding space for a person who's very open. Um, you know, the energy moves in such a beautiful way. It's it's about experiencing how it feels, feel into it, be gentle, and be kind-hearted with someone that even if it's not just twin flame, it's just in general. Be a good good listener. Be there to hold space in a way that, you know, they just may just need to be heard to process their thoughts of what they're feeling. It's just breaking it down. I have a great friend. I have a, a, two great friends that I can do that too, that I can go say, you know what? Oh my God, girl, I was feeling this and I was feeling that. And they're like, oh my God, Debbie, here you go with your style. And I'll be like, because you, sometimes you just, the, the things that we witness or feel sometimes needs to be, uh, you know, moved, moved or held space for us or just like the matrix, you know, or what, what was that movie, Lucy? Have you ever seen the movie Lucy? And she like yes. fully awakens. Girl, like that's man. one of my favorite movies. And she's just going, zoom. Zoom. And that's what I'm doing. It's like the movies passing through my awareness and I'm constantly getting data. And I just need someone to like, let me, let me look at this. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. All right, girl. Now I know where you are. <laughs> that's not me. I'd be like, I got it right here. I, I figured it out. Let's, let's work with it today. And so, you know, you just got to give yourself a minute and just be calm about it, grounded about it and bring it down to an awareness of like, okay, Where's your energy at today? And so let's changing the story, changing the comp the energy, and bringing it back to self, and 
bringing it back to your own awareness. And so then it balances it back, you know, for me, <laughs> when I'm going through something or when I'm experiencing something, it's nice to have people that are kind, that are gentle, and that will listen to you. And so if you're going through any of these experiences, find a great person that's definitely there that's going to understand you and be able to hold space for you. Yeah, it's those important. people are worth their weight in gold, especially when they're so open-minded with if you are having some energetic experiences or spiritual or or however you're not sure to define, those people are worth their weight in gold and and, and really just keep them close. Yeah. Right. So let's go here. Let's see what they're saying. The connection brought up reverse birthday since the birthday is 5995 and mine is 5998. It wasn't familiar if there was something there. Oh. This this connection brought up reverse birthdays. Oh, okay. Rever Tell me how you mean reverse birthdays because they're this other. Uh, they're the same. Like either way, like wow or mom. Like like when you flip a word or something. Is that what you're thinking of? Like it's the same either in in, in um, either direction. Um, with with that being said, just addressing it like that way, the value will be the same of the totality of the number, but with certain calculations and certain um, numerology systems, you will break down those numbers differently and you'll look at them differently. So it's like, what is your angle in? You know, it, it's like with psychic work, like how are you working with astrology or numerology? Just with the system of numerology, how are you working with the numerology? And certain numerologists look at the number systems differently. So it's not the same across the board just because it's a number sequence. So it's very technical and fascinating. But is that what you meant? Oh, the day and the month, his is a five, nine, and yours is. A... So when you have it in that placement for Pythagorean numerology, for instance, you're still going to get the same value when you break it down in the attitude placement. And the attitude is like, what a person's attitude is like how do they communicate what's a large chunk of their personality like how would they make decisions and that's your attitude number and you have a five and he has a five so because you just gave me you know two um birth dates um so both of you have that value of five regardless regardless of if it's reversed or the same right that was your question and so that means you're going to be in the five energy. So you're going to communicate in the five energy and you default on that five energy. So as long as you have time around each other, whether it's on the phone, could be the computer or in person, you're going to vibe very naturally with each other. It's like you could say something we're, we're just kind of talking about. You could say something crazy or off of, you know, left field. And he would say like, oh, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Like you, you mean like A, B, and C. And you're like, yeah, how'd you know that? Or yeah, like that's actually what I meant. It's because the way that you think, it's on the same frequency. And so you could say things and it will still just be telepathically received rather than with words purely. So, okay, you understand this Aspen. When people have the exact same attitude number, which you do with this person, there's a really special like, connection between friends, between family members, between relationships. Um, you will have other things that you have to work with and harmonize because maybe that in one case is, let's say, the only good number out of the whole chart. But even if you have that placement, it goes so far because you're always able to have communication on your side largely. And that's usually where a lot of people have problems with like with intimacy with communication. So it's it's a really good marker for potentially having a good relationship. If you have a harmonious number in the attitude placement or the exact number in the attitude placement, it will always feel like this person gets me. I love that for her. <laughs> I'm just going back to the comments. Erica Neva says, as a life path eight in 2024, being an eight year, can it provide a brief insight on what I, as an eight path, can expect this year? Great question, Erica. Yeah. So, okay, you're a life path eight and you're in your eighth year. And I would like to know your attitude number two, because your attitude number is really important for your personal year. 
So your personal year, you're actually asking me a personal year question, um, but you're looking in the wrong place a little bit. So we have to like find your full birthday to find your personal year. But there will be themes. Yes, there will be there will be themes. So you're a life path eight and 2024 is a world number eight. So the world number is not super influential to us individually, but it is individual. It is influential to our country, our community. It's going to like run kind of the way the world goes and what happens with politics, um, whether it's peace or conflict, um, things more global scale and it will reflect its way to us. So um, like I said, sometimes the world year is not super really influential to us. But as a life path eight, it will kind of personify these certain vibrations that you naturally have in you that the world is working on to itself. Okay, so it's going to remind you of your truth. It's going to remind you of your personal power. It's going to remind you that you want the world to be a better place and you want to do your part and step up to help secure that for others and to help actually be the best version of yourself. So you're going to feel very empowered this year because Mm -hmm. you're going to see yourself like echoed out into the world Mm -hmm. and you're back and you're like, what kind of world do I want to build? You know, Mm -hmm. like what, what kind of person do I want to be? And you feel very personally responsible this year. If you can understand that Erica, it will feel like you really want to get your stuff together. And um, it's about being a little bit more, self-disciplined and being a little bit more like sobering with some of the um, choices that you've made in the past that you're ready to mm-hmm. step up. Okay. Right. So elements definitely, but not as implement influential as a personal year. And you find that through uh, a, a different way. Right. Oh, I feel she said she can understand. Right. And I was feeling her energy. Like she's very self. So she's very, fiery she's got a lot of fire energy within her and i feel like it's about speaking up for you this year erica it's about working through the emotions don't be afraid to speak up i also feel that you're super sensitive within your gut so like really pay attention to your intuition within your solar plex i feel that you're getting messages and you can hear so really stay in tune with yourself i feel like you're just like this amazing um vibrant soul they give me a little bee for you so a bee is like honey a little bee of nectar of life so the sweetness of life fill into that my love and you just rock it if i'm going into 2024 for you i just want to give you fun you know yes i am a sun and pisces moon oh how cute i'm a pisces too so you know we're we we water signs are fiery too so i love that right um so our just like personalities we're intense kelly says i'm intense y'all Water and fire, they they have an intensity. They have an intensity. Yes. It's pretty cool because I was doing a podcast the other day with my friend Simon and in the calendar of um the dragon, we're dragons, right? And and he was breaking down the fire we're fire dragons in the Chinese calendar. And if you go here, I'm a Pisces water. I was like, ooh, that's scary. Watch it now. You know, you Leos, because you know my girl here is a Leo and I'm the water. We two together, we definitely coming in hot. So you guys got a great pair of intuitives holding space for you right now. Look at me just in our power and just calling us out fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we uh, we're, we're we're vibing off of similar frequencies, right? Whether right. It's the or the Leo, and um, ultimately, it's basically it's really cool that she's a life path eight and a sun in Leo because that means she feels called to step up for others. Mm-hmm. Um, like eight and the Leo placement is basically like I have to take on a responsibility load and I have to be there for others and I have to show people a better way to do it. And so that means that they're very, even if, if they find themselves otherwise, um, cause life is crazy. Right. So I want to, I want to give her a break. That's why I'm saying like, I feel like a lot of times she's organized and she's always thinking like, Oh, that's not enough. Or, you know, I could do things better. And, um, it's like a tall order that she's given herself and just, I want to give her a pat on the back and it will all come together. Just don't take on too much at once. Just, just work on little victories and then everything will come together. Right. And I think, 
Tilsa was in here. She was an eight too. So Tilsa, I felt like this was a bit for you as well. So take a lot of this as she's going through the, the life path of eight. I also feel you are someone who organizes. I also feel that she's like exactly my spirit team is having me work on boundaries. Well, girl, the bee she medicine, comes. fill into the bee totem, fill into that bee medicine, allow that energy to come to you, you know? And, and Tilsa love, take what resonates with you because I felt your energy come in. I saw that you said you were an eight and I could also feel that same fire that Erica is experiencing. So like get your hand and do some more energy work. Uh, Tilsa is what I was getting. Like really, really feel into that. What about those who are la life path nine? Jesse's like, I'm a nine. We'll leave you guys with that. I mean, you were rocking it with Erica until so like, I love the way you just be bringing forward all your numbers and stuff. So if sure. we move it along to Jesse, what, is, what does a nine yeah. mean? And just to give you, um, everybody like an understanding of how we're reading today, it's like, you know, think about the aura and we all have colors within our aura. And um, to read an aura, there's just so much and there's so much context. But sometimes we're aware of like reds coming in strong or blue and we understand what that energy means. So in a certain placement for people who have nines in their life path, that denotes certain things that they do with their energy. So to look just at the life path nine, um, it would showcase that people are always gravitating to doing things for a purpose that sometimes they don't understand themselves. They just go with the feeling of where life takes them. So they're very smart in the way that they can just pick up things in the moment. And they're very surrendering naturally. Um, they have a very good barometer for if something works for them or not. But a lot of times they suppress themselves and they try to help other people first and they try to feel into a situation where they can offer somebody let's say help rather than helping themselves so very very intuitive people um with a life path nine um they will always find their way um to something spiritual creative or something where they have to take on an unusual situation to help others or um, to evolve themselves. So nine is the embodiment of all the numbers. It naturally creates a very capable person and allows the person to experience very unique situations where they can help unfold other people's understanding of what it means to be a human in the way that they operate. Mm -hmm. Now, those who I know, congratulations, Congratulations to those who know their life path number. For those that don't know, can you tell them what the trick is right now for them to find out what their life number is? Their life path. Yeah, yeah. So your life path number in Pythagorean numerology is going to, and a lot of systems use this for their 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 calculation. Um, you just do your full birth date. So you're going to do your month plus your day plus your year. So like if you were a February, let, let's say today's day, if you are born on February 7th, um, 2024, you would do two plus seven plus two plus zero plus two plus four. And you add that up and you get a number and then you break that down and that's your life path. So if you, you got a 36. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So to break it down, if you got a 36, this is just hypothetical. If you got a 36, um, you do three plus six and you add a cross and you get a nine. So whatever you get as a, a double digit, you're going to make sure it becomes a single digit and it's going to give you either the number one through nine. Okay. And that's how you learn how you are in numerology as your life path number. Oh, <coughs> I love that. And there's a there's something here. Sorry, I had to explain. It was good. What, what does this say? Ward. Hello, I can use some words that give me hope to my soul. It is a regular. It is regular to be multiple times showed on transcend and become more spiritual than physical. But I notice that I believe my belief is fading away and it pains me because I feel like it's at the point of happening. It turns into feelings where I don't recognize its essence. I don't understand. Do you understand what the question is? I'm not sure, but I think like um, it sounds like he's had or it's like I'm not even sure. Ward, I'm guessing you're a, a guy. Um, he's had experiences where he is being shown to believe or um, trusting himself that even though things are 
uncertain and confusing that he has to still go forward and things will be okay. But um, he says he's he can't feel like where the essence is. So he's like, I don't know how to, let's say, tune in or or to trust oh. or I don't hear it. So it's like I'm having trouble believing. Um, okay. That's what it kind of sounds like. That is a word one. I'm very sorry that you're experiencing that. Okay. So for some, for a lot of us, this goes back to where are we connecting to and what we're getting, what, how we're connecting to the energy and frequency and the message, where is it coming from? Right. So this is where I would sit with yourself and connect to your higher self and allow your energy, just visualize that you're a huge avatar and start holding on to the back of yourself and let your energy blend and fill into the energy of what your spirit feels like. And then when you do that, allow your own energy to start to blend closer and closer as you take diff different breaths in and out so that you can still first feel your own self. I have a podcast on Spotify that's called The Higher Self. And it does a meditation in there that'll take you into your own essence first. And so from there, then you can bring into the spirit world and then you can recognize your energy first and then the spirit world. If you join Libby Cook on Tuesdays and Thursdays, she does meditations where she does attunements from spirit world and then also your own energy. So as we awaken, we're always trying to pinpoint the, our intuition. And so if you could understand your own energy first, that's the key. So I would have you do that first, my friend. And so I hope that answers your question. Now everybody has their life paths together. Looks like we got a couple of sixes in here. So Kelly, can we go on a life path of a six? Sure. Like, yeah, we're always learning about our energy and sometimes it feels confusing and we're not supposed to always get energy the same way because then we wouldn't learn anything right and we're always learning and things are confusing here on earth school so hang in there um yeah, yeah. so a six you know I, I while you're while you're saying that i feel like we have to go a little bit back with ward a little bit so you six number six people hold on for a second here um i would also say auto write auto writing getting your words out, journaling, putting it on paper. I mean, really, really yeah. sitting with your thoughts as well. And, and trust yourself. I also believe that the word trust is going to be important when we're getting the messages and we're filling into it. Trust that it feels right. What were you thinking? What were your thoughts at for the day? And that also, the intent, go in with the intent. I want to understand this. Give it to me more clearer. Let me see it in my sleep. Give me signs and really work with what you're trying to bring forward in the um question that you're doubting so i'm going to leave you there ward, ward much love to you because obviously we can really go into that even deeper so go ahead miss kelly i didn't mean to shut you down there my friend go ahead for this the number six um okay yes for people who are life path sixes so you might have sixes in other areas but we're just focusing on the life path that means your total birthday reduced to one digit, um, it's going to mean that your life will always guide you back to wanting to have meaningful friendships, wanting to have uh, stimulating relationships where you can feel like things are a family. And you will be a person who helps cultivate that and lead people to come together. So very protective, very generous. Um, your place of work has to feel like an extension of family in order for you to be truly happy like six is a very maternal number it's a very healing number where you want to uplift people and environments and the more sixes somebody has within their chart the more that they will be this in every area of their life as well as they will have all this tremendous reserve of energy to make sure they can do just that help other people they will need to sleep less than the average person they'll always have like this extra like bit of burst of energy so they can go, how can I help you? Or you need me to go the extra mile? That's what I'm here for. Um, so very, very selfless. Um, um, if they love you, <laughs> they can be selfish. <laughs> if they don't love you, they'll be like, you're not part of the family. You're not part of the group because they're protective. But very selfless when they actually 
includes you and love you. It's very pack mentality. Mm. Wow. That's like true. Wow. I love that. Well, it looks like we've gotten a lot of birthdays. Anybody have any other specific questions for Miss Kelly Brickle? And Rich was giving me, he's asking me, um, I don't okay. know what your um, birthday is because, you know, you could have like a seven or an eight or something where your blank is, but you're saying you got a 10. So if you have, if you got a 10, um, let's see, if you got a 10, then are you 42 then? Let me know if that's right. But if you got a 10, then um, that would be 1942. That's what I'm saying. But if you got a 10, you're a life path one because one plus zero is one. So you're just, you're adding a cross. Okay. So 10, one plus zero is one life path one. So Rich, you'd be life path one if that is correct. Um, a Rich saying, where did I learn this? Oh, you can learn it from <laughs> online, books, numerologists. I teach too. Um, but I learned a lot from like Linus McCants. Um, and before Linus McCants, I started uh, researching like books and um, just articles on the internet. But I really always recommend Glennis McCants because she's just such a consistent numerologist. And I can learned you, a lot from her. Can you type her name in the comments so people can yeah. find her? Absolutely. So you guys can mm -hmm. start to study and put on that whiz hat and just investigate and follow her. I can't type in the comments though. Oh. <laughs> it's not letting me. Oh, maybe if I join the chat. Interesting. There you go. Uh, it's not. It's it's prompting me. I don't. Let me see. Let me so, see if I can. Even well, we'll it. get it to you guys. I promise. I'll type it in there for you. Um, I'll put it in the chat for you. Um, <laughs> when I post her bio again, and we'll give gratitude, Here and I'll make sure that you guys can see it. Are oh, you there now? Oh, I take it back. And y'all for on YouTube following, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the likes. Don't forget to follow Kelly Brickle. And don't forget to share, 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 and give the loves. I mean, Kelly, thank you for even sharing your time today. I think this is amazing. Rich is in um, UK, by the way. So he's like, it's 3 in the morning. I can't think. I can't add this up. So, um, Rich, <laughs> shout out to you for watching and listening in the UK. Mike, blessings and good night. I have given my highest fears to trust and saw as myself called the universe. I hope I don't offend just not at all. And I have experienced very, very strange things that make different in what I thought I would never be because it might not, not in my sight. I am another, like another, and I understand more than spirit and talking, taking its place over the body. I, it's like, oh my God, the comments are coming in fast. Follow Mike, y'all, on YouTube, on TikTok, too. He does amazing recce work every morning, afternoon. Follow him, Mike Egan, um, under Mike the Wizard. Uh, I have all the power. I'm in control of nature of all. I just don't understand the sight. I can't control. Well, you know, Mr. Ward, I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Kelly. <laughs> so, um, you know, sometimes we get overwhelmed. You know, we are infinite beings. Um we are more than just our physical body. We're more than just this identity. And when we tap into our soul and our soul's energy, um, we start going, oh my gosh, I'm so much bigger than this. And I can connect to this and I can connect to that. And I'm a part of the universe and I'm a part of this person. Uh, we're all connected, right? And so it gets overwhelming. So we have to ground ourselves and we have to simplify our lives. And we have to really, really make sure that when we're becoming more sensitive, our self-care goes up because what happens when our frequency goes up, our mind and our emotions sometimes go, I don't know how to react to this. I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know how to react to this. So the most important thing I can recommend to you, Ward, is really ground and have self-care and return back to your current um, self so you can um, start to actually understand and work with these things whether, rather than be just overwhelmed with these things. Mm -hmm. So self-care, self-care, and you will return back to a clearer place where you can go, wow, okay, now I can think clearly about what I'm experiencing rather than just going, whoa, 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 whoa what is this? Okay, so. 
That's that's my advice. Right. I love that. I think that, that he's speaking really of what a lot of people go through, though, when it comes to an awakening. Right, Kelly? Like the awakening. What we I, we can have many awakenings, not just once. Like once we're open, we can have so many um, different waves of shifts. And especially when, if you're attuned, as you, you say, you're attuned to the universe, the planets are constantly moving and shifting and maybe getting a chart read to see where you are aligned and, you know, an astrology chart to see where what guides and you know, your, your alignment of planets and how it's going to affect you and study those planets. And, you know, what are the properties that come with that and what emotions it, I have a book that I got, I don't have it here, but <clears throat> every time we go into a planet, it gives me a diet to follow and exercise to follow how to stay grounded, how to um, ebb and flow with the energy. And I had to do that. And I'm not, I, when I started this work, I was like, oh, I, astrology, like, I don't really know, like, astrology, I'll go get my chart read. And, but really, we are, it is affecting us on a deeper level. Some of us are so attuned to it. But now, I'm a, I really, I sit and I say, it's the new moon, God, and tune me to the new moon, and tune me to Aquarius. Let's get ready for the energy. <laughs> Bring that into me close. Like, let's go, baby. Let me sit on this planet. Like, so we start growing and excelling and, and really embracing the shifts. So be gentle with yourself, my friend. <laughs> and you know what? Do me a favor. Email me, and I will sit with you, and we will talk. So email me on my Transcend with Debbie. I got some time, and we'll just do a little one-on-one. -on -one. I'll give you some, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and we'll chat it up, and I'll get my coffee. Don't mind me if I'm in my pajamas, though, because that's how I roll sometimes. So I hope I can just hold space just a little bit for you on that one-on-one -on -one level. So anybody have any questions as we close for the night? Well, there was a lot of questions up top. There was a lot I of know. questions what, up top. What does your spirit feel guided to? You, I'm going to let you do... Um, I'm going to let you do you, Miss Kelly. You go where you need to go, and, and I will sit here and smile and hold space. Okay. Let's see. Let me see. There was somebody asking about. Okay. They're asking me individual questions, and I don't have their charts. Let's see. All right. Let's see here. I'll just pick this one. Um. Maggie was saying, I was told my life path is seven and personal year is seven. What does that mean for 2024 for me? So it changes every year. So if the math is correct and you are a personal year seven, that means that this is a year to go within and to spiritually get connected to yourself in a way where you have to not be distracted by the world. So seven is a very like mental vibration of spirituality. And it's a very like subtle vibration where you have to tune out the physical world. So people sometimes who have a lot of sevens in their charts, they're either like mathematicians or that like really are in their head or they're like spiritual monks. Okay. So they're kind of a little bit ostracized because they prefer that way and that's how they get things done. Um, so it calls for you to be okay with plans breaking or for you to actually feel like you don't know what, let's say, the next step in your life is because that year, the personal year of seven is going to help solve those questions for you and you personally get back in touch with yourself. So no distractions and you start getting answers and you start having more peace within yourself. So seven is about doing the detective work and not allowing somebody um, to do it for you. So no, don't, don't outsource this really get in touch with who you are. It's a very, very enlightening year. And the year will always go very, very slow compared to other years because it wants to make sure that you savor the moment and you really get in touch with what's going on. Okay. So yeah. that's what comes up. Um, life path. When someone, oh, the last thing I want to say is when someone's personal year matches their life path, there's usually an enlightenment burst where they do have um, understanding of why they're here. Okay. So, okay, good. She's, she's searching to do that right now. <laughs> she says, thank yeah. you. 
You know, when I tap into your energy, Maggie, I feel like animals, girl. Like you got the touch of like the animals are going to bring you a lot of healing, a lot of love. I feel that you are really in a beautiful connection within the mind. I feel that your spirit connects to you. And I just feel like just really fall into that, like really welcome that closer connection. I feel like you've studied so much. And I also feel like you should be teaching or sharing. So whatever you're learning, friend, like just keep giving it back. It's going to give your your um, your life a, a huge smile, a huge upliftment is what they're showing me. So a gentleman on the other side steps forward and he's just like, keep going. It feels very fatherly. I feel very supportive, very strong. I know things happen very fast quick with him and i know that he's just got your back 100 percent. there's an apology either not being able to be there the way he, you know there's something about missing here or not being able to be there and he's just like girl i got you so like he's working with you keep um, working with spirit world and sharing your love so um that's what i get i, I know I'm tapping in here just a bit when my girl's doing the numbers and you guys are all amazing for holding space. God bless all of you for just being here. Yes. That's my husband. Always. Your husband is just a beautiful soul. I could feel his energy and essence in such a beautiful way and the dogs and the animals. And just like, literally he sees me sitting. I could see him sitting on this couch and he's showing me these impressions of like these blue and baby blue. Um, either they're like kids or like those, it's just like an old type of fabric or something that he's showing me here. And I get the sense that he's just like sits there ah uh, yes he is ah uh, i love that so and just dancing like i want to dance with you so you definitely have a beautiful dance between you and him in spirit world so that love that you have i'm just going to leave you with that and just keep sharing your knowledge and love because that is what's going to bring you um upliftment and so with that you know kelly where can people find you so because you do this every week and you have your own show and so people can follow you and get your num their numbers read their life their life uh path and their their soul reading i mean now you all know when someone asks what your birthday is you better be a little extra you'll take that little extra mindfulness and be like give them that side eye i don't know what you're gonna pull out of this birthday or chart you know all this detail that they're gonna find all about you, <laughs> you yeah. know? So that's yeah, some serious like our, stuff. our 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 birthday is like our license, you know, our energetic license. <laughs> That's, <laughs> so what I That's what I said. I'll never forget it. I was like, oh, you want my birthday? You want what? You know, that's a that's a big order. <laughs> you sit there, you think you're gonna know all about me. <laughs> it, oh, um, you know, it just depends on how much you can pull from that. But yeah, like our energy lets us know so many things. And you really at the end of the day. Like you really can't hide who you are. We all are just who we are expressing ourselves and the people who are supposed to see us or the people who are energy sensitive enough, like the energy is out there. The energy is known. We all are knowers and we're just coming home with like letting our walls come down and our fears and our prejudices. We're all connected. So we're all supposed to know one, an one another and be compassionate with one another in this experience um you can find me through kellybrickle.com as well as like just social media platforms i'm under kelly brickle and um yeah i just there's I, I do stuff every week i do readings every week and shows and I do interviews with people too to help showcase their amazing talents as well as um i have a network where i'm uh, buildings to help people share, you know, and create their own shows and share who they are um, to help the teaching going. So, yes, I'm that's so proud of you, friend. Congratulations on your new network. Uh, so, for those who want to spot and share their knowledge, reach out to Miss Kelly Brickle. She might be taking applications, y'all. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'll be taking um, applications soon. And that's how the website is being flushed out to fleshed out. Um, uh, so there's gonna be like packages for like people who want to sign up for different things. Because you know, you could do a podcast, you could do a live show, or you could have, um, you know, a much more extensive archives of your work if you wanted them. And that would be something that you wouldn't have to overthink, it would just be done for you and just show up and share your gift. And that's, that's why it's so great. Congratulations. So y'all don't forget to follow my girl, Kelly Brickle. Don't forget to hit the hearts, the likes, and the love. Kelly Brickle, would you like to end the night 
with a little gentle message for the collective. Okay, well, I'm being really attracted to the color orange as I'm thinking of the, the collective. And it's just about this year, um, as we are settling into ourselves and we are enacting that next chapter within our lives, make sure that you do so with joy and remember that in order to create, we have to use our bodies, not just our minds. So really feel back into your body, really feel your bones, really feel your skin, feel your hands, your face, your feet, become a walking receiver and attractor. And the more physical we be, excuse me, the more spiritual we become, the more physical we must ground ourselves uh, to pull in the energy all the way and help change the world. So that is what I just want to remind people of. It was very beautiful. Thank you, friend. So those, um, again, please don't forget to follow Kelly Brickle. Uh, Rich had one question before we left. Can you, and I think this is going to be for a lot of people. So he's asking, how do I calculate my life path number? Write out your birthday. So he's giving an example, November 2nd, 1998, right? Um, and if we go to that, he's gotten three one. So the three one would be four, yes? Would you add it together? Okay, so you say November 2nd, 1998. So um, hold on. This is what he got. Yeah. Um, well. It would be a five. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna double check that. It would be a life path five. Um, let me just double check. So four plus. Oh, it would be a life path. It would be life path four. I'm excuse me. See, I, it's like my head's like. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Um, it's a life path four. So um, it would be that would be a thirty-one, and three plus one is a four. So yeah, that's correct. That's so that's correct. how you would add it for anybody who's trying to, this is a beautiful example, Rich gave anybody trying to figure out what your life path is. You add the number of November is one, one, right? Then you're adding the day you're born number two, the year with each number. And if it comes to two numbers, you're going to add them together, which will give you your right. life path. If it's just one number, that's the number you want to go by. Yes. Okay. So you just want to add across and then reduce okay and it's as simple as that beautifully said thank you rich for asking oh he just googled look at you googling at three in the morning more power to you he's out so, he's out googling he's out googling. yeah so thank you so kindly everyone for being here thank you kelly for being a guest on transcend with debbie don't forget to follow her because her and i will be doing valentine's day readings on valentine's day Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. So yeah, we're pink care. again. Uh, oh, you mean my candy cane blanket. My candy cane. You want to. Where's the <laughs> sweet? I will always, I'm always going to rock the sweetness, girl. That's how I roll. So each and every one of you take care. Have a beautiful um, morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. Much love. And God bless. Take care. Happy take Valentine's care. Day. Bye. Happy Valentine's Day.